Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name is Kirsten and this is our corner of the internet where we talk about books all the time. We buy books, we do book hauls, we do book reviews, we read books. So if that's your vibe, hello, welcome, I'm glad you're here. And today we are doing a fun video, we're doing a book haul and it's all fantasy because I have entered my fantasy era. It may be brief, it might be a brief era. If you've watched any of my other videos, I've read Sarah J Mass. I enjoyed it. I've read a few other dark academia fantasy books that I enjoyed, but I feel like I haven't fully immersed myself in fantasy as a genre since I was probably in middle school or maybe high school. So I've decided to do that so that I have some book recommendations for you guys from the fantasy genre. So I'm just curious to see what I actually think about it because I will say this, the one genre that I don't really enjoy at all is romance, but I do like romance in fantasy. Most of these books I am hauling are from the library because I am on a book buying ban. There's only two of them that one was gifted and one that I bought and I want to normalize doing book hauls from the library because I know you guys enjoy book hauls and I enjoy filming them and I also well I enjoy buying books but I also enjoy watching them and I didn't want to just buy a ton of books solely to make a book haul video a bunch of my library holds came in all at once and they happen to all be fantasy I mean they don't happen to because I literally specifically put them all on hold okay so the first book <laughs> You guys are probably going to guess this. Think about what book it's gonna be. Think about what book I'm gonna show you right now. Think long and hard. It's super popular. It came out this month. The month is May. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. I already read this one, so, but I wanted to include it in the haul because I did get it from the library. I am about to post a review video of this book, so I won't say whether or not I like it because this is not what that is. This is a book haul. This gives very much divergent Hunger Games vibes. They're in a school setting, so basically we're following our main character, Violet. I think she's 20. She has grown up her whole life thinking that she was going to go into the scribe quadrant because her father was a scribe and he recently passed away. So she's been training her whole life to be a scribe, but then her mother, who is a writer, writer as in like she rides dragons, she is like, nope, you're going in to the writer's quadrant, which basically means you have to go through all of this training and all of these near-death experiences or potentially die yourself in order to bond with with a dragon, enemies to lovers, there are dragons, there is a ton of fighting. This little blurb on the front says, the most brutally addictive fantasy I've read in a decade, and that may or may not be true. You'll have to watch my other video to find out. <laughs> I literally was gonna say something. Anyway, moving on. Oh my gosh, Junie, I love you. So along the exact same vein of super popular fantasy book, this one I got from the library too, but it's called The Serpent and the Wings of Night. The whole reason that I checked this out is because people said it gave them the same obsession as Akatar. But I think this is a duology and I think the other book just recently came out. All I know is people love the romance in it and that's 90% of the reason why I got this. Um, I think again, Again, it's another enemies to lovers so i'm interested to see what i think of this compared to the fourth wing there's vampires in this which i'm excited because i loved vampire diaries growing up and i mean i remember coming home from high school and just binging vampire diaries literally my mom even loved <laughs> vampire diaries I, when i was in high school we're just going off on the tangent real quick but i have to say this my stepdad didn't he hated that series so we would never watch it when he was around and i remember distinctly senior year of high school my mom would come downstairs super late at night not on a school night and she'd be like do you want to watch it and he would be sleeping it'd be like midnight and we would stay up to like 2 a.m and we would literally lay right in front of the tv and put just subtitles on with no sound and we would watch the vampire diaries secretly anyway i'm hoping this gives me vampire diaries i'll read you the back and we can discover what this is about together the adopted human daughter of the nightborn vampire king Aurea, love those fantasy names, carved her place in a world designed to kill her. Her only chance to become something more than prey is entering the Kajari, a legendary tournament held by the goddess of death herself. So this is kind of giving me similar like tournament school vibes as the fourth wing, but winning won't be easy. It's the most vicious warriors from all three vampire houses. To survive, Aurea is forced to make an alliance with a mysterious rival. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is definitely gonna be enemy lovers. Everything about Rain is dangerous. He is a ruthless vampire, an efficient killer, an, an enemy to her father's crown and her greatest competition. Okay, literally this is very similar to the fourth wing, except it wasn't vampires in that. Yet what terrifies Aurea most of all is that she finds herself oddly drawn to him. Of course she does. 
so ridiculous and like so predictable, but something about it, I just wanna gobble up, but I have a feeling after I read all these enemies to lovers fantasy books, I'm gonna swear off reading anymore for a while and I'm gonna need a full on palette cleanser. And I already know what my palette cleansers are going to be. They're going to be To Paradise by Hanya Yanagihara and East of Eden by John Steinbeck. And I know that's totally uh, 180 in the other direction, but I feel like that's what I'm gonna need, especially with the nice summery weather after I binge all these enemies to lover fantasy books from Blood and Ash. I have a feeling this one is gonna be terrible. I've heard some things. I've heard some commentary about this book and I feel like it's gonna suck. I'm gonna try my best not to DNF because I wanna have recommendations if you guys say. If you guys ask for very specific book recommendations, I want to be able to deliver. This is me building up my fantasy, romance, romanticy repertoire so that I can be like, yes, this book has a man who is super evil to the woman. Somehow she still falls in love with him, even though he ate her and he killed her, but then he was so sexy while he was killing her that she fell in love with him and now they're together and they've been mated. Surprise, surprise, they were mated the whole time. That's why she could hear his voice in her head. Read this. I don't know if that's what this is, but I'm just giving a wild guess. Okay, it says captivating and action-packed from Blood and Ash is a sexy, addictive, and unexpected fantasy perfect for fans of Sarah J Mass but that's all we need to know. Okay, next up, which this one I am already like 30%, math is hard. Um, I'm already about 70%, maybe even 80%, I don't know. I'm almost done with this book, and that is Once Upon a, Bro a Broken... Okay. That is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. This is Young Adult, which I didn't realize. Nonetheless, I, mm, all right, I'm not giving reviews, but I'll just let you know. I am enjoying this, but in the beginning, I almost DNF'd it not gonna lie. I'll talk more about this in my review video, but basically this book follows our main character Evangeline. She is in love with a boy named Luke. He ends up trying to marry her sister and she's convinced that he's cursed. So then she goes to the Prince of Hearts. It was giving me very much Addie LaRue making a deal with Luke from The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. That's the vibes it was giving me, but not as good as that book. Still good, but anyway, basically she wants to stop the wedding and then the way he stops the wedding is turning everybody to stone. And then she ends up owing him three kisses. You see where I'm going with this. Then it, enemies to lovers, but I think more of the enemies to lovers happens in the second book. So that's that. <laughs> Next, we have the last library book, and then we have two books that I own. All right, last but not least, and I honestly, I don't know if this one is Enemies to Lovers. This might just be like regular old fantasy with politics and stuff, I don't know. Dance of Thieves. I really don't know what this is about. It's just highly recommended via book talk. From my understanding, it follows some thieves. A legendary street thief leading a mission determined to prove herself. When outlaw leader meets reformed thief, a cat and mouse game of false moves ensues bringing them intimately together in a battle that may cost them their lives and their hearts. This is Enemies to Lovers. I'm gonna need a huge palette cleanser after all these books. And I also kind of want to try to read them in like a week. That's ridiculous. I know I'm probably not, that's not gonna happen because they're all really kind of long. But yeah, I'm gonna try to just gobble these right up. Okay, last two books of my haul, Queen of Shadows, because this is the next book in the Throne of Glass series that I need to read, which I, this is also gonna be enemies to lovers because of how things left off in the last book. I'm stressed out about how many Enemies to Lovers books I have to read in the upcoming weeks. What if I just never want to read Enemies to Lovers again after this? That might happen. It's fun every once in a while, but consistently reading this many fantasy and Enemies to Lovers in a row might send me over the edge mentally. This one is not enemies to lovers, I don't think at all. I think this one is gonna be the telltale sign of if I actually like fantasy, not romanticy or romance in fantasy or just Sarah J Mass fantasy, but if I actually enjoy fantasy and world building and the politics that go into fantasy books. And that is The Priory of the Ornish Tree. And this book has been staring me down every single time I'm at the bookstore. So now I brought it home. I actually am really excited to read this because it's huge. Sometimes you just want to read a really fat book because then you feel accomplished. This book is, how many pages is this? It's like 800 pages. Yeah, it's basically 800 pages and it's huge. And the second one just came out and I love the colors on the cover of the second book. I can't wait till it comes out in paperback. No idea what it's really about, to be honest. I kind of want to go into it blind. The Washington Post says it's mesmerizing. Karen Marie Monning, sorry if I just butchered her name. Brilliant, diverse, feminist, subversive, thought-provoking, and masterfully told. The Priory of the Orange Tree is epic fantasy at its finest. And then BuzzFeed said, Shannon has taken
partake in the fantasy epic and breathe new life into it, allowing women's stories to take center stage where they belong, even in a world nothing like our own. That sounds amazing, and I don't want to read the plot because or read like the synopsis on the back because I want to go into this blind. And also, I have this just feeling that I want to try to annotate this. I've never annotated a fantasy before because I don't know, normally when I annotate books, they're books that have quotes that I want to keep and apply to my own life. And I feel like I don't find those a lot in fantasy. So I kind of want to come up with a new way to annotate. I am feeling mentally exhausted just talking about all of these, but I am really excited to read them and see what I think of fantasy as a genre. I know there are just a million other fantasies out there. Like people say Brandon Sanderson is the king of fantasy. I've never read any of his books and I know I probably should, but I decided just to read the most popular books to see what the heck is going on. Why are these all hyped up? Would I recommend them? What do I think of them? Should I recommend them to you guys? Anyway, I hope to see you guys in my next video. Uh, my next video should actually be my review of The Fourth Wing. So if you want to see that, make sure you stick around. But I hope you guys liked watching this video. Let me know what books you recently added to your collection or what library books you recently checked out or what books you are super excited to read. But until next time, I will see you next time.